the digestive system. So the digestive system is a system that comprises of organs whose main function is simply digestion. So they break down complex food substances into simple soluble particles that can be easily absorbed and assimilated by cells. So this means that the simple molecules can then be easily taken up by cells and utilized for various functions such as production of energy. If I may give an example of starch, we eat a lot of starch, especially in our food, such as from rice, potatoes, and so on. Now, when starch undergoes digestion, the final product is usually glucose. Now, it's easy for our cells to take up glucose and use it for production of energy. So when we talk about digestion, all the food substances are going to be broken down to the simplest molecules possible. In the case of carbohydrates, you're going to have the monosaccharides, so glucose, fructose, or galactose. Now, in the case of proteins, the simplest, the building blocks of proteins are the amino acids. In the case of fats or lipids, that is fatty acids and glycerol. So my point is this, digestion is essential to provide the necessary molecules for the functioning of the cells. What is the digestive system? So the digestive system consists of all organs through which food substances pass through. What is the starting point? The mouth, of course. This is where ingestion happens in the case of humans. Now, the end point, of course, is going to be the anus where food is then eliminated from our body. So we're going to have the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine consisting of the duodenum and the ileum, the large intestine, the rectum, and lastly, anus. So when talking about the digestive organs, we are going to focus on each of these mentioned. We are going to talk about the activities that are present within, what are the adaptations and so on. We are also going to focus on the associated organs. They play a very huge role in digestion. We are going to discuss the liver and the pancreas. So stay tuned because this lesson is going to be packed with information. Yes! Now, the mouth, our starting point. We are going to have three main structures within the mouth. We have the teeth, of course. We also have the tongue and the salivary glands. Now let's start with the teeth. What is the function of the teeth? Now the teeth physically break down food substances into small particles. Now, in biology, physical breakdown of some uh, substances can also be referred to as mechanical breakdown. Pause. When it comes to digestion, there are two main types of digestion. We have mechanical digestion and we also have chemical digestion. Now mechanical digestion is whereby food substances are physically broken down, such as in the case of chewing or mastication. So we are using our teeth physically to break down the food substances into smaller particles. Chemical digestion, on the other hand, involves enzymes which are plenty in the digestive system. Now coming back to the teeth, they break down the food substances into smaller particles. Fine. What is the point of doing that? Is it to make swallowing easier? Well, yes. But the main reason is so as by breaking down the food substances into smaller particles, they increase the surface area for enzyme action. Now, there is an enzyme that is present in the saliva in our mouth, but the enzyme cannot act on large food particles. Just imagine you have taken a chip are a fry into your mouth. The enzyme present in the saliva cannot act on the on the chip or the fry the way it is. It needs to be first broken down into smaller particles. And that is where the teeth come in. So by breaking down the food substances into smaller particles, they increase the surface area for the functioning of the enzyme. Moving on, we have the salivary glands. Now we have three salivary glands that are found in our mouth. We have parotid, we have sublingual and we also have submandibular. Now the parotid is found beneath the cheeks, sublingual from the name itself beneath the tongue and then the submandibular are found along our jaws. Now in case you're wondering, will I be required to know where the, uh, the, the salivary glands are located? It's good if you can but in most cases questions are usually not focused on where they're located but more on whether students can remember that there are three salivary glands and what their names are. Now, all of these three secrete saliva. Now, saliva is a fluid whose main component is water. Now, apart from water, we also have mucus. And lastly, we have an enzyme by the name of enzyme salivary amylase. This is also known as tiring. Now, let's start with
water. Now the function of water in the saliva is that it dissolves the food substance. Bus. Moving on to the mucus, the mucus lubricates the food substance, therefore reducing friction. Now guys, I want you to imagine a scenario whereby you are ingesting dried food. For example, you've just taken a piece of chapati into your mouth and there's literally nothing, no saliva in your mouth. It's just a dry cavity within it. Can you imagine how uncomfortable it can become? with you chewing that food rolling it in your mouth when there's literally nothing to lubricate it i just want you to imagine that scenario thankfully that doesn't happen because we have mucus to lubricate our food so it makes moving the food around the mouth and swallowing much much easier lastly we have enzyme salivary amylase now enzyme salivary amylase breaks down starch to maltose simple as that now in the mouth only chemical digestion of starch takes place. That means only starch is broken down to form a maltose, nothing else. So we don't have chemical breakdown of protein. We don't have that of uh, lipids, only starch. Now, I want to say this. Whenever, whenever you see an enzyme that has a name amylase, then just remember this is an enzyme that acts on starch. And it breaks down starch to form maltose. Capish? We are done with the mouth. Now, oh, sorry, I have forgotten the third component and that is the tongue. Now, the function of the tongue is it manipulates the food. It moves the food around within our mouth. And then it rolls the food into a bowl. This is known as bolus. Now, once rolled into a bowl, it's then pushed to the back of the mouth so that it can be swallowed. Now, one fascinating thing about us humans is that we have a flap called the epiglottis now just to remind you we have two tube-like structures in our neck we have the esophagus which is also known as the gullet this is the food pipe where food passes and then we also have the trachea this is the passage for air now to prevent food substances from passing into the trachea we have a flap called the epiglottis. So essentially what the epiglottis does that when you swallow, it covers the trachea, ensuring that the food, the bolus, does not pass into the trachea, but rightfully passes into the esophagus. Now, I know you've heard of scene of cases where people choke because uh, food accidentally moves into the wrong passage. So instead of it moving into the esophagus, it moves into the trachea. So it can cause... Uh, choking because you are cutting off the supply of air since it's going to end up blocking the trachea but as i say thankfully thankfully this usually doesn't happen because we have the epiglottis for that now in the esophagus food substances move along by a force known as peristalsis now along our alimentary canal which is the digestive system we have circular and longitudinal muscles now muscles can contract and relax now, when these muscles contract and relax, they generate a force that pushes the food along. Now, in the esophagus, the muscles contract and relax rhythmically, you know, with a certain beat. And when they do so, they move the food along the esophagus and into the stomach. 